Hey, what's up everyone, and welcome to a very exciting tutorial on Unreal Editor for Unreal Tournament 3. Today we'll be going through the basics for beginners, things such as adding geometry into your scene, adding static meshes, like this tree here, adding water, terrain, sky dome, and most importantly, this reed. Oh, and lighting as well. Um, oh yeah, and fog. Look at that. You can tell I haven't practiced this tutorial. Um, anyways, yeah, so at the end of it all, hopefully we'll come up with something like a this. Nice. Very nice. We've got the water going on here. Bit of an animation. Got a textured geometry along with loads of static meshes. The reed, of course. Badly textured stairs, which I don't really care about. Um, I'll explain why later. Got more static meshes. You got this pretty nice roof. Got a double jump and a gun. And my impact hammer. Didn't make it that time. But yeah, so if I go inside the water again, it's pretty neat. Yeah, so that's the uh, that's what we're hoping to achieve by the end of this tutorial. I guarantee you, at the end of this tutorial, Enforcer, you will come up with a wicked, wicked level on your own. And I want to see those levels, so uh, you know, post me a link or something like that. Awesome. Let's get started. Right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to open the program. Um, when you open the program, don't run it as a normal user. What you want to do is you want to run it as the admin so that when it comes to publishing your level, you won't run into all these problems that everyone online keep getting. Like, oh my god, why can't I publish my level? I keep getting all these stupid errors. Why can't I do this? Blah, 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 blah. That's because they're not running the program as the administrator. So save yourself a whole load of hassle just by simply right clicking the icon, the Unreal Tournament 3 editor icon, and selecting Run as Administrator. Once you've done that, you'll get the normal loading screen and then you'll be presented with your empty scene. Problem solved. Cool, so first thing you want to do is you want to hit File, New, and you'll be presented with two options, Additive and Subtractive. Additive basically means that you'll be adding geometry into your workspace. Subtractive means that you'll be subtracting geometry out of your workspace. So if you think of Subtractive as this giant cube of mass and you're just tunneling your way through it, you're just subtracting your geometry out of this cube of mass. Every other tutorial online is more or less done in Subtractive, so for your sake and the sake of learning, I'm gonna, you know, choose Additive. Hit OK to Additive. And then you'll be presented with this massive void, right? Now you'll probably be seeing something that looks like this. Blah, blah. Now this window here, although it might look annoying, is actually really useful. Now I don't ever really close this. If you do close it, easy way to bring it up is by clicking this blue and white grid icon. Now that brings up your generic browser. This window is your generic browser remember that, it's important. Right, what I like to do is I like to just drag it out of the way. Now these two rectangles here are your viewports, right? This viewport here is currently set to perspective, that's the P up here, and the viewport below is currently set to top, that's T. Um, you view your scene through these viewports, hence the word viewport. Now to move around the viewport, you hold down left click to go forward, and drag back to go backwards, right? or left and right looks around your scene. <clears throat> now right click pivots on the spot so you can just look around your scene as much as you like using the right click. The scroller zooms in and out and hello shiver Done. right and left click and right click pans up and down and left to right. Now to maximize this viewport, because they are pretty small, you want to click the maximize viewport button. That's up here, do that, and look, looky, you have a maximized viewport. It's pretty handy, isn't it? So you might be asking yourself, what is this red cube? This red cube is your builder brush. Now, the shape of this brush will determine the shape of your geometry that you'll be adding or subtracting out of your scene. 
To move this brush, simply left click it and you'll be presented with three different colored arrows. The red arrow represents the X axis, the green is the Y and the blue is the Z. Now if I click and drag the red arrow, you'll see I'm dragging my brush along the X axis. If I do it with the green arrow, I'll be dragging it on the Y and the blue arrow dragging it along the Z, which is pretty cool. Now, say for example I wanted to rotate this brush, I'd select it and I'd hit the spacebar. Now I've got my rotation widgets, which is pretty cool. Right, so follow the same rules and you'll get the same thing. Sweet. Now say for example I wanted to increase the scale of this widget, I'd click the brush again and I'd press the spacebar and I'd get these three red cubes. Now if I click and drag these cubes outwards I'll increase the size of my brush. If I drag it inwards I will decrease the size of my brush. Pretty useful, right? Now say for example I wanted to you know, increase it along one axis, so I want to increase it sideways and only sideways. What I'd do is I'd get my scaling tool and then I would click on this button here, the use the non-uniform scaling widget. Click on that and then the three red cubes will go back to the RGB uh, XYZ colors. So if I cl click and drag one of them as you can see, I'll be dragging outwards. It kind of messes up the vertices a little bit, but you know, whatever, right? You'll work with it. Now let's move on to adding our first bit of geometry. Now before we do that, we've got to set up our brush. Now my brush is going to be based around a cube, so I'm going to right-click this cube icon here within this panel, and I'll be presented with a brush builder window. Now in this window, I'm able to control the X, Y, and Z values of my brush. So I want my brush to be longer on the X axis, so I'm going to enter 1024, for example, in the X field, and I'm happy with 256 being the X, Y, and Z. Now I'm going to hit build, and my brush has now changed shape. So that's building your brush. Now say for example I want to get a preview of my geometry before I've added it. Um, I do this by simply clicking on this red square here, this toggle brush polys icon. Click that, then click your brush and you'll get a pretty cool preview of what your geometry will look like. I'm pretty happy with that, um, so I'm going to go ahead and add it to my scene. By clicking on the CSG add button over here. Nice. Now. Um, let's get rid of our brush. So hit B on your keyboard to get rid of your brush and you'll notice that there is a break in our grid. Now basically we've added our geometry we just can't see it because there are no lights in our scene. If we sort of click in this black space you'll see that we are actually clicking on a surface. Now in order to see our geometry without any lights in our scene we go to unlit mode. Now, as you notice, there are a few modes up here. So let me go through these icons really quickly. The first icon is brush wireframe mode. This allows you to look at your scene in a wireframe mode. The third icon is the unlit mode, which basically means that you're looking at your scene in an unlit environment. And then lit mode basically means you're looking at your scene in a lit environment. So you're using the lighting that you've added into your scene to view your scene. Right, now in order to add our first light, in fact no, I'm not going to add our first light, we're going to go to unlit mode, click on this unlit mode icon here, so we can see our geometry. Now, so we've added our geometry into our scene, um, we can't really do much with it, um, I mean the most we can do with this is probably walk along the top of this of this surface. Um, so we want to add some terrain, right? Um, to add terrain, we're going to move over to this window here, the generic browser. Now again, if you've closed it, um, simply hit this blue and white grid-like icon and you'll open up your generic browser.